In 1853, the United Brethren Home Frontier and Foreign Missionary Society launched a wagon train of missionaries which traveled from Iowa to Oregon on the Oregon Trail. There were 38 oxen pulled wagons, 98 persons, and 300 head of cattle. The trip took six months to go from coast to coast. They planted 48 churches. One of those churches was Pine Grove Community Church. As early as the 1850s, the site where Pine Grove now stands was used for camp meetings. Circuit riders would come for miles to hold services under the Pine Grove by the Deer Creek. Circuit riders and men of the community were the only preachers in this early church. Circuit riding preachers on horseback carried the gospel from community to community, organizing churches and doing whatever they could to tell the people about Christ. Many of them were farmers who traveled around preaching in their spare time without pay, sometimes supervising a circuit of up to 30 churches. The energetic and larger-than-life Methodist preacher James H. Wilbur preached at a camp meeting here at Pine Grove in September of 1856. James Wilbur was six feet two inches in height, straight as an arrow, deep-chested and powerful. He oversaw education at the Oregon Institute, a Methodist school in Salem that later became known as Willamette University. And he served as an itinerant preacher, traveling by horseback to remote communities like ours for religious revivals. Milton Wright, the famed father of the Wright brothers, was the founding bishop of the United Brethren in Christ. Originally, Pine Grove Community Church was a United Brethren church. In the 1850s, Milton was a missionary to Oregon. His diary reads that on August 23, 1859, Milton traveled from Wilbur up the Deer Creek to preach at a camp meeting here. There were nine preachers in the rotation. They preached four times a day. The services lasted for 11 days. There were four reported conversions. Sometime after 1864, the circuit riding preacher Abbot Levi Todd of Looking Glass helped organize several churches, including Pine Grove. He was truly a circuit riding preacher with a 175 mile horseback trip three times a year. It was in 1869 that John Newman and Nathaniel Cockleryus, both carriage and wagon makers, with the help of others in the community, began to erect a church building. Mr. James Dixon furnished most of the materials and money for the project. John Starr Bonebreak was also a carriage maker and carpenter by trade. He built the pews for the church in 1888. For a time during World War I and II, no services were held at the church. May 1, 1945, Mrs. Cora Collison asked Brother D.D. D. Randall, the American Sunday School missionary, to come to her home and help a number of interested people to organize the Sunday School. The Sunday School took the name Pine Grove Union Sunday School. Dee Dee Randall would stop by Pine Grove once every two to three months, sometimes unannounced, and hold morning services. At that time, there was only a Sunday School. But when the area missionary showed up, they would all stay an extra 45 minutes or so for church. In the 1930s and 40s, Randall drove a motorcycle with a sidecar. The kids always liked to see him come, but were more interested in his outfit and the motorcycle than his preaching. In 1948, the Pine Grove Union Sunday School sign came down and was replaced with a new sign and a new name, Pine Grove Sunday School. In 1950, Elward and Eileen Smith began the youth group at Pine Grove. Dr. Roy Dunn, began regular Sunday morning and evening services in 1958. He organized the Sunday school into a church body in 1959. There was a dedication service and 36 people signed on as charter members. That year, the church celebrated its 90th birthday. Later in the year, officers were elected and the church was incorporated. Pine Grove was founded by men and women of strong, fundamental Christian values. The grand vision of the church was to enable the reign of God in the new world. And for that to occur, Christian reformers must find a way to sweep away the works of Satan. In the words of Jeremiah Knoyer, I came to this country and have done the best I could through many trials, built up and established the church. I am now nearly 82 years old, but while I live, I expect to contend for the faith for the Father.